right. Hello and welcome back to all of our um, number one fans and welcome to our new listeners. This is Coffee and a Combo Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Jenna. And I am Cameron, your other host. And this is a podcast about really anything that a couple 20-something-year-olds might talk about over, you guessed it, a cup of coffee. So, um, this week's conversation is going to be all about health fads. So, um, we're digging deep into two in particular that you'll hear a little later on and just kind of covering the surface of a few others, but especially with the new year coming around and a lot of people's, as we talked about last week, a lot of people's New Year's the week before last week, wow, New Year's resolutions um, being to lose weight or to eat healthier or to go on a diet or whatever it might be. We thought this would be a good topic to cover. So that's just a little, a little pre, what do you say? Prequel? Prequel? Prequel. Pre- prequel. prequel. I never know how to say that. I prequel. read it. I read it, but I don't think I've ever said that word prequel. out loud. Yeah. Out loud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, for what's, what's to come. But Cameron's going to say what we're drinking. Yeah, so today we are drinking a Colombian medium roast from Cool Beans Coffee and Roastery in Cool, in cool Beans in Brookings, South Dakota. And we are drinking the almond flavored one. And so, first off, I don't know if you guys even know how flavored coffee is made. Do you know how flavored coffee is made? No, I don't. Give okay. us a lesson. I'm actually, actually interested. I actually made this today um, while at work for us. So you take the beans. Usually we measure them out for like however much it is. And then like so one pound of coffee gets a half an ounce of flavoring. And it's like this flavoring in a bottle. And it's like each bottle is labeled for it. But it is really not like natural at all if you can imagine. This flavoring is probably like a chemical. Really? It's, like, not, yeah, it's not good for you. It's not, like, organic. Interesting. It's, like, it's... Is that just how you guys do it, or is that how, like, most coffee... I think that's how all coffees are made, because we, like, buy it from a company who, like, sells these. So I think that's how all coffees are, unless, like, I don't know, unless maybe it says, like, organic. But you can get just, like, a medium roast that has flavors of, like, the berries and all that stuff in it, and that just means... Um, that it was, like, grown with berries. Like, the beans were grown with berries or oh, something, gotcha. you know? Yeah. But when you actually get, like, a flavored coffee specifically, right. that's what this is. So, anyways, you put this, like, oily thing on it. And, um, oh, it says it says on the bottle, flavored with, when it, you know when it says, like, natural or... Artificial? Yeah, it says flavored with artificial, like, oh, is what yeah. it says right on it. Anyways, so, yeah, you put the little oils on it, you mix the beans up, and then it's ready to go. Yeah, anyway, so this one, Jen and I both agree that it smells so much like an almond so like good. cookie or like yeah. almond extract. It smells amazing. But... Like, you know those like really like flaky like, like pastries like, or cookies? Yeah, e- either or. But I'm talking about the one, the the kind you get around Christmas time that come in that little tin that your grandma always kept her selling stuff in. You know the little tiny cookies I'm talking about? Like the wafer, like crispy oh, cookies, yeah. you know? It smells like that, but like ten times stronger. Very strong. Very strong. But we both agree that we don't really like the taste of the it. The taste. Yeah, I yeah, wish I, I wish it know. tasted like it smelled. Yeah, it doesn't. That's the thing. It does not taste like it smells at right. all. Yeah. It's almost like bitter Yeah, it is like a little it, bit bittery. Which um, almonds, which almonds, if you... See, I don't know, like you said, it's artificial, so I don't know how that works. But I know that sometimes if you don't get your almond flavoring quite right, or if you like over overcook your almonds or something like that like if you're like roasting them yeah. in a pan or something they can get a little bitter oh so, i don't know maybe yeah maybe but i know there's people who do like this almond like yeah. flavored coffee so yeah. it's just us just, just our us. opinion yeah yeah but it smells amazing so even if you don't get it to drink <laughs> even if you just like want to make your house smell amazing go buy yourself some and then brew it and even if you don't like how it tastes your house will smell Amazing. Like an almond bakery. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now let's get into the episode. Okay, so to start out, um, the two diets that we're going to do a deep dive in are going to be the keto diet and the paleo diet. I feel like they're two really big fads right now, so just wanted to give you guys um, a little bit of information on them. But before we dive into that, we're just going to tell you what our own diets look like. Um, I feel like we have both done a lot of research for, like, our own bodies and what works for us and tried out a bunch of different things. So, um, for me personally, I, 
I, mine isn't, I don't really like label mine like anything, but I think probably the closest that mine comes to is the paleo diet. The paleo diet's a little fattier than my diet is and cuts out carbs a little more than um, my diet, but pretty much um, I eat, I eat, uh, it'll be easier to tell you what I don't eat. So I don't <laughs> eat, I try to stay away from um, gluten and in particular like bleached like, like gluten, wheat products, whatever. Um, I don't really worry about cross contamination. You'll f you'll hear a lot of people who are gluten free. Um, they worry about like eating oatmeal or something like that because it's processed mm -hmm. in the. And for people who actually have celiac disease, that's a really big deal. Cross contamination is because they can go into um, like some people even have it so severe they can go into like epileptic shock. Epileptic shock. I think it's is how you say like it like that. that. Yeah. What do we need the epipen for? Um, so, so smart. But, um, so I try to stay away from gluten, not because of an intolerance, but just because of, um, just my hormone issues. My body has a little bit harder time processing it. Um, and then I try to stay away from sugar, um, red meats. I'm supposed to stay away from caffeine. That does not happen, but, um, I'm going to try to cut back a little bit more this year. Um, and like bleached grains and really um like not the best starchy vegetables so like white potatoes and like corn and all that stuff so I try to just eat as clean as I can so I eat a lot of vegetables I eat um I eat a lot of like chicken and fish um I also try to stay away from um dairy there we go <laughs> oh my gosh try to stay away from dairy quite a bit too so that's kind of, that's kind of mine. I would say mostly it's lean proteins and a lot and a lot and a lot of, um, vegetables and plant-based stuff. Yeah. All right. So mine, I don't take anything specific out. I have tried to be like kind of vegetarian, like, uh, put my hands in it a little bit and see what I think. Um, I've also tried vegan. Jen and I tried that together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not for us. Not for us. Uh, or not for me, at least. I don't know. You said maybe you'd try it again. Yeah. But, um, I, yeah, definitely have done some experimenting. Um, I mess around with my macros a lot. And the reason that this started, actually, is I follow a girl on Instagram. And her name is um, Julie Ledbetter. And she is uh, pretty popular. I've been following her for, like, probably like three-ish years when I started my macro counting and I actually started my macro counting when I gained like 10 or 15 pounds like my first semester at college and the thing is that I didn't really notice I had gained the weight until I went home for Christmas and I was like I don't know I think I may have weighed myself or something but I'd also noticed like my pants were fitting tighter like my face right. was looking a little chubbier and it just all kind of happened at once that I really like I just hit me and I realized it and I was like so unhappy and I was like okay clearly eating like this and eating like the food on campus and everything is not gonna work so because <laughs> I was going to the gym like pretty consistently but then I wasn't as good about pushing myself at the gym and like cardio um which I've gotten a lot better at but I found her and she talked a lot about macros and how like you can eat what you want but then put it in into your macros and I followed that for a long time I'd be like okay I'm gonna have dessert like that's fine but then um say I'm having that piece of cake, well, then that means, like, I can't have bread, that bread for lunch or something, like, because that right. was my carbs, and I followed that for a long time. I'd kind of eat what I wanted, but follow it into my macros, and for me, I started off with, like, 50% carbs, 25% protein, and then 25% fat, mm -hmm. and then I actually went, um, I have, like, I get migraines and stuff, um, and I kind of did an elimination diet a while back and found out that I get it from beef. Um, I haven't found it with any other red meat. I also found, like, with lack of sleep and, like, other things I get it too. But definitely beef. And when I went to him, actually, he put me on, like, um, this Mito Detox pill. And it helps my body detox because my body doesn't always do the right job of, like, detoxifying right. everything. And at that time, he was like, you need to up your protein. You need to be eating more protein mm. with your carbs. And I actually told him that I followed my macros, which a lot of people don't do. Right. And so then he helped me get on what I do now. And he's like, you need to lower your cal carbs and up your protein. And so now I do 35% carbs, 30% fat, and 35% protein. So for me in a day, this looks at about 104 grams of carbs, 27 grams of fat, and about 45 grams of protein. Um, and then like, I have been getting more to where like I'm better at listening to my body's cues. Like if I start to feel full, like I stop eating, like that kind of thing. Right. Um, or if I'm not full, then I eat something. 
So, like, I don't always follow it exactly, but I'm a lot better with it. And, um, so for me, like I said, I don't eat beef. I kind of stay away from red meat. I really like fish and chicken. And I'm trying to get better about only eating, like, meat, um, like, once a day. Yeah. Or, like, some, sometimes I'll notice I don't eat it for, like, two days, and that's fine. So right. I'm really trying to be more plant-based. Um, right. Yeah. That's kind of what I look like. Trying to get my vegetables in. Um, oh, another thing I've been doing is eating, like, really all-natural and so, like, I talked about a couple episodes ago, and I told you guys I wanted to eat, like, no sugar, and I haven't had any sweets or any desserts or anything awesome. since then. So, I've been doing really good with that. Um, have you heard of Smart Sweets? Yes, okay. I have. Yeah, have GNC, you gotten them? Yeah, GNC sells them now. I want to get some. Like, and I live, oh my gosh, pretty much. I work just kitty corner from the GNC in the mall. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I got a bag, and I got the, I hear the Peachios are the best. Okay. But I got the, the gummy bears is what was at GNC today, and so I got the gummy bears, and the, they were actually, like, pretty good. Yes, yeah, so they have, like, no added sugar. Right, so it's no added sugar, and then it's no fake sugar either, so it's all, like, natural the sugar the sugar and sweetness and it comes from plants or fruit or whatever that's awesome yeah no i've been hearing a lot about them and i hear you can get them at target too have you seen them at target i haven't really looked for them at target okay. i just knew one of my um one of the vloggers i follow posted about the fact that she got hers at gmc okay gotcha yep no so i guess well you tried them i was gonna say we should try those i will try them let you guys know what i think um yeah, another thing, too, that I've been trying to be better at is, like, making, like, because bread will have a bunch of added crap in it. Yeah. So, I make my own bread. I make my own hummus. I just made some hummus. You should try my hummus. I just need it. Oh, yeah, I should. Um, make my own protein bites. Yeah. So, yeah. that's kind of what my diet looks like. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I know, and I know, like, a lot of the time, because Serena, Serena, she was kind of thinking that maybe she was going to cut out gluten for a while, because I hope she doesn't mind me talking about her personal life, but it's fine. <laughs> um... She was, like, feeling, like, really bloated and stuff and not quite right, and so she was thinking about cutting out gluten, but I think a lot of the time, more than people realize, it's not necessarily, like, gluten in itself, it's maybe how it's processed. So right. I've been making, I've been making our bread at home a lot for us, too, and she loves it, and she feels a lot better with it and yeah. stuff, and it doesn't upset her stomach and make her feel kind of gross, like, um, even if it's, like, quote-unquote healthy bread from the store, you know, or, like, yeah. health foods, they still have to put, because, like, actual bread... In, in its, like, original sense or whatever, it should mold within, like, a week. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that you get at the stores, even if it's quote-unquote advertised as being healthy, um, it's still going to have a ton of preservatives right. in it, which is going to be, like, chemically and And they have stiff. a lot of, like, added sugars and stuff. Yeah. So, like, the bread recipe that Jenna and I use, I know, like, I know you make a few others, too. Yeah. But it has, like, four or five ingredients. It's yeah. literally water. One of them is water, flour, olive oil, yeast. Yeah. And it is so good. Yeah. I actually, the one I just made, it's sitting on my counter right now. I put chia seeds in it and Ooh. flax seed. And I noticed it was looking a little razzle dazzle. Like seeds, seeds, seedy. <laughs> yeah. Seedy. It's so good. So. Well. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now that you know what our diets kind of look like, and I feel like it works for us. I feel, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I want to get better. You inspire me. I want to get better at tracking my macros and stuff. But for me, I am just very much like if I'm craving carbs, I'll go and I'll eat some complex carbs. If I am craving like protein, I'll, you know, type of thing. Which I think is okay within right. reason. Right. And I feel like, I feel like kind of after, after you, you've adapted to the lifestyle a little bit, it just becomes almost kind of easier. It does. Like, you know, and almost without even realizing, you kind of track in your head, like, okay, I've eaten this much today, this is how much more I can right. eat. Right. You know, type of thing. And I do that some days. Some days I'm so busy, I don't have time to track, or I don't have time to, like, figure out what I'm going to eat for lunch. It just kind of happens. Right. So I just, like, go as, as I go. I'm right. like, okay, I had this for breakfast, so then that means I need to have, like oh, I ended up not having peanut butter in my yogurt for breakfast, well, then maybe I right. should have some avocado for lunch. So they right, get that fat exactly. in or whatever. Right. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah. Okay, so the um, first thing we want to cover real quick is a disclaimer. Okay, we've said this before. We are not doctors. Um, we, but we come really close. We, yeah, we <laughs> come so close. No, seriously, we are not doctors. This is research that we have done, and we always, always, always encourage you guys to go do your own research. Like, if you are, hey, I want to try eating healthier, I want to start a new diet, whatever it might be, um, go research, go go see what's out there, dig in. Um, even stuff that we say, you're like, hmm, sounds a little, sounds a little not quite right. Go, go look it up. We encourage you to do that. Um, we are not at all certified health coaches or health professionals in any way. And um, just so you know, where our sources 
come from for today's research. Um, our sources include the following, Wikipedia, um, IrenaMacri.com, MedicalNewsToday.com, EverydayHealth.com, and KetoLogic.com. Okay, so jumping right into that, um, the keto diet. The ketogenic diet was initially developed as a therapeutic way to treat seizures in patients with epilepsy. Um, in the 1920s, actually, is when it, like, first came about. So, it's been around for a while, although it's viewed as, like, a new quote-unquote fad. It's now viewed as a natural way of eating that can be beneficial beyond just those who suffer from seizures. The diet is made up of roughly 75% fat, 20% protein, and 5% carbohydrates. This combination enables your body to enter a state of ketosis, where the body switches from burning carbs for fuel to burning fat. Um, another common practice in the keto diet is the 16-8 intermediate fasting. This is when you go 16 hours without eating and consume all of your calories during an 8-hour window. Um, essentially, like what that is, is it's forcing your body into ketosis because it your body runs out of glucose, which is its natural um, energy source, if I, if my research is in my brain correctly. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard. Yeah, which is your natural um, resource that's essentially um, going that extra little bit without eating, so a lot of people won't eat until like noon or something like that. It's forcing your body into ke into ketosis, ketosis, I think is how you say it, and then your body starts burning your fat reserves. So, um, what is ketos ketosis when you break it down? Ketosis is a normal metabolic process. When the body does not have enough glucose for energy, it burns stored fats instead. This results in a buildup of acids called ketones within the body. Ketosis describes a condition where fat stores are broken down to produce energy, which also produces ketones. As ketone levels rise, the acidity of the blood also increases, leading to ketoacidosis, a serious condition that can prove fatal. So ketoacidosis, like, don't get too scared off, like, oh my gosh, you're going to put a, go on the keto diet and you're going to keel over. No. Um, keto keto over from, from, the from keto. what I understand, from what I understand, ketoacidosis is really only a threat if you have, like, type 1 diabetes or, like, a mm -hmm. serious kidney problem or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, people, yep, yeah, and then that was my next note. People with type 1 diabetes are more likely to, to develop ketoacidosis for which emergency medical treatment is required to avoid or treat diabetic coma. Okay, so... If you are a type 1 diabetic, the keto diet, not for you. Not happening. Okay. Not so, today. <laughs> not today. So essentially, your body's usual and primary source of fuel comes from glucose. Glucose is typically derived from dietary carbohydrates, including sugar, such as fruits and milks, or yogurt, starchy foods, such as bread and pasta and potatoes. If there is not enough glucose available to meet energy demands, the body will adopt an alternative strategy in order to meet those needs. Specifically, the body begins to break down fat stores to provide glucose from, what is that word? Trig triglycerides? Okay, I'm going to spell it out for you guys because, again, not a doctor. T-R-I-G-L-Y-C-E-R-I-D-E-S. No yeah. idea. Okay, go look it up. Okay, so... Is it healthy? The ketogenic diet, also known as the Atkins diet, could have a health a healthful effect on serious health conditions such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, the type 2 kind, um, metabolic syndrome, and quite a few other medical issues, some of which are still being researched. Um, studies have also shown that the keto diet can help improve heavy cholesterol levels, HDL, and lower bad cholesterol levels, LDL. Keto supports a reduced risk for heart disease, and a ketogenic diet may lower blood pressure. Boosted energy levels improve cognitive function, and enhanced better moods and sleep patterns also can occur. Um, the one piece of research I found that really stuck out to me was this. Um, the ketogenic diet supports regulated hormones, and I thought this was super interesting mm -hmm. because I hadn't, I, I guess, like, I had kind of always just been like, oh my gosh, cutting out carbs, like... I, you know, I eat complex carbs, like, I, I just kind of thought that it was an unhealthy fad almost, and then I did my research, and not necessarily true. Okay, so, um, one of the top most reported reasons for women wanting to try the ketogenic diet besides weight loss is for hormonal balance. Women who suffer from hormone imbalance may find relief with ketogenic way of eating. 
For example, research supports that keto may help with polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS, you guys. Literally, I read this. I'm like, what? You're like, that's what? me. What? That's me. And related infertility. By avoiding, wow, that's yeah, crazy. isn't that crazy? Okay, so by avoiding insulin spikes while following a ketogenic lifestyle, women with PCO- PCOS report a reversal of increased androgen hormones. So, like, that's that's hormones that you're not supposed to have at high levels that are at high levels, specifically testosterone, which leads to a reduction in PCOS symptoms and increased fertility. You best bet I'm about to hop on this diet and try it out. <laughs> like be seriously, so fertile. Um, and then the other one typically found is um, thyroid health and longevity. Along with balancing sex hormones, a ketogenic lifestyle has a positive effect on thyroid hormones as well. A very low carb diet tends to drive down T3, the main active thyroid ho- hormone, and then a, and higher T3 levels make your cells use more energy, hyperthyroidism, which can increase free radical production. Many scientists believe that lower levels of T3 actually increase lifespan by conserving energy and decreasing free radical production. A ketogenic lifestyle is positively correlated with improved thyroid health and overall health. Hmm. All that being said, some possible bad side effects. We have to we have to cover both here because right. you need you need to know. You do. You need to know. So, muscle loss. Muscle loss um, is the uh, number one possible bad side effect of this, which I mean can kind of I I mean you can kind of guess why, but I'll just read anyway. Muscle loss on the ketogenic diet is an ongoing area of research. Um, small studies suggest that people on the ketogenic diet lose muscle even when they continue resistance training. This may be related to the fact that protein alone is less effective for muscle building than protein and carbohydrates together after exercise, which I read that little tidbit and I'm like, okay, here we go back to how you, to like the food combining that you were talking about last week. So, um, so realize you guys, even like it can really, it can't what foods you eat with what foods can 100% um, be either really effective or really ineffective as, um, at, like, in regard to delivering proper nutrients to your body. Right. Um, or okay. even how, like, my doctor told me that I needed to eat more protein with my carbs. Right. That I was yeah. eating too much carbs, like, on its own. Right. So, right. Um, okay. So, and then according to a small study published in March 2018 in the journal Sports, people following the keto diet for three months lost about the same amount of body fat and had about the same muscle mass changes as people following normal diets. Yet, the folks on keto did lose more leg muscle. So, Ooh. the people doing the keto diet and regular diet, they lost the same amount of weight, but the people following the keto diet lost more muscle. Um... So, this is the another one. I already talked about this briefly, but um, the second possible, p- possible bad side effect, um, it could put stress on your kidneys. So, note, if you have any kidney issues, this diet is more than likely not for you. Um, it's been known to cause um, kidney stones if you are... Um, if you are a little bit on the older scale of, you know... The years of your life, and then um, could cause could cause constant fluctuations in weight, also known as yo-yoing. A lot of the also sorry also as known as yo-yo dieting. So a lot of the articles that I read, pretty much the one thing that they can all agree on is that this is the worst. This this diet is one of the worst ones for this reasons because so many people. Um, get on this diet as, like, a, um, crash diet. So, I mean, like, I, (laughs) I even did it once. So, so just a little side story for you. I ordered my, um, bridesmaid's dress for my sister Brianna's wedding, and it was a Vera Wang, and at the time, I was, like, a very true size 8, right? And so, you always, for bridesmaid dresses, you are always order a size up, and so I ordered a size 10. And it came in the mail, and you guys, I'm not kidding, between the, the, like, two sides of the zipper was probably, like, five inches. It, what, that, that sucker was not closing, and I didn't have enough time to send it back and get a new one before the wedding because there was, like, a two-month wait on, like, the dress shipping or whatever, and plus I had to get it hemmed, too, and there's no room to let it out. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the movie Bride Wars, but 
you alter yourself to fit Vera. You don't alter Vera to fit you. Like, that is in there, okay? And so I'm like, crap. I have, like, a month to fit to, like, get myself five inches skinnier. And so you bet your bottom dollar. Everyone's like, do the keto. Do keto. Do no carb. Do no carb. Do no carb. And I'm like, okay, but, um, I'm like, like, that's, I, like, crash dieting is not good. But, like, uh, at that point, I'm like, what other option do I have? So I am not kidding you guys. I crash dieted, did the keto, fit into that dress one month. It was a little bit more than a month. It was probably like five weeks, but, um, fit into that dress just barely. Like I, yeah, like if you look at the pictures, it kind of how it's supposed to fit is like a little bit loose, but man, that sucker was skin tight on my midsection no, and uh, yep, crash dieted. I did. And so, but the thing is, is a lot of people, they get on this diet because they hear it's a really fast way to lose weight. And it is a really fast way to lose weight. But the thing that's with this diet, and honestly with a lot of diets, is that people will get on it and they'll do it for a while and then they'll be like, okay, I lost the weight. We can go back to how we were living before. No, 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 no. If you're gonna, if you're gonna start on something like that, you have to realize that, oops, sorry, that when that when you're deciding to, you know, start a quote unquote diet, you need to real you need to pick something that's going to be sustainable, that's going to be sustainable for a lifestyle choice. So, if you're not going to be able to go for however long on a limited amount of carbs, maybe, you know, keto isn't really the best thing for you. You know, you have to pick something for yourself that's going to be sustainable for a long time. Otherwise, you are going to get into that um, constant weight fluctuation, that yo-yo dieting, as people say, as apparently people say, that's my, this is my first time he- yes, hearing about too. it, but it's, a, I mean, it's a good, cause you go up and down, up and down, up and down. It's a good way to say it. Yeah, um, definitely. anyway, so here's just, um, my notes on it. Rapid significant weight loss is a common side effect of the keto diet because of the water losses that occur as carbohydrate stores are depleted. People following the diet have the best chance of keeping the weight off if they stay on it long term. And that's not always easy to accomplish. The weight may come back if you go back to your regular eating habits. And regaining weight may lead to other negative effects. Yeah, rapid like weight loss and then regain and weight loss and regain is it's just, it's very bad, you guys. Um, chronic yo-yo dieting appears to increase abdominal fat accumulation and diabetes risk, even more so than, like, so if you, this is what this article said anyway, if you, um, if you, um, like, lose, let's say you weigh, like, 180 pounds, okay, and then you lose 20 pounds, Mm -hmm. and then you go back up to 180 pounds, you are actually worse off at that 180 than you were when you were at 180 the first time. Oh, Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's just what this one yeah. study study said. Go, like I said, take it with a grain of salt. Go research it yourself. That's just what um, this one study said. Um, studies have also shown that the ability to stick to a diet is more important for long-term success than the type of diet that's actually being followed. So, like I said, something sustainable is going to be... Um, the fact that you can actually stick to it is going to be way more important than, like, the actual diet you're following. Right. Because if it's not, if you can't stick to it and you are just doing that fluctuation, it's going to be way worse off than if you hadn't even, you know, mm-hmm. dieted at all. Okay. Um, so, an article from a- everydayhealth.com recommends a diet called the Mediterranean diet, which I have never heard of, but <laughs> thought it might be, a- <laughs> be worth a mention for anyone interested in a different in different eating habits that are out there. The reason I put that as an honorable mention in my notes is because I'm like, I have literally done so much research on, like, different lifestyles and diets and, like, health just because it's interesting to me, and I had never heard of the Mediterranean diet. Have you? I feel like I have heard of it, but tell me more about what it is. That's literally my only note. Oh. So, literally, it says, which I have never heard of, but thought it might be worth a mention. This is what happens when I do research late at night, you guys. Okay, but I'm pretty sure the Mediterranean diet... Um, okay, once again, this is just us live, not looking anything up, but I'm pretty sure it's just, like, how Mediterraneans eat. So, I think it's just, like, like fish and, like... Olives. (laughs) Olives! Feta cheese. I think it's just, like, like, all those things, like, in their natural state and, like, I don't know. You know what? I don't really know. But I think I've heard of it. I think we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little, like, recap, um, recap section of 
like, at the beginning of every episode, it's like, hey, remember when we talked about that last week? Here's the actual facts on it, because we kind of mentioned it in passing without any oh, real information to, to back it up, but here's the information now. We're gonna start doing that. Did we have anything on our last episode? I just listened to it today, and I don't think there was anything on it that we um, weren't sure The only on thing that we weren't sure was on, on beer. was on beer. <laughs> yeah. We literally spent, like, 20 minutes but on beer. But I think beer. we got to the bottom of it. Or if we didn't, we got to the bottom I of it. I think it was, like, hoppy or bitter. Yeah, exactly. Was the end of so, it. So, if you guys didn't get that, it's hoppy or bitter. Hoppy or bitter. Okay. So, here we are. We're almost done with the ketogenic diet. And then we can go on to the paleo. The paleo is a little bit shorter. Then you can hear my voice more. Um, yeah. Cameron's lovely voice instead of my my manly, aggressive voice. Oh, okay. whatever. The ketogenic diet can lead to dehydration and a loss of electrolytes. The brain's favorite fuel... Is glucose, which I was interested in um, in that wording, like the brain's favorite fuel is glucose, so it's not like, hey, the brain's favorite fuel is when it dips into your fat reserves, you know, type of thing. Like, it's it's natural. I don't know if I can say natural because I'm not 100% sure on that, but from what I understand, your brain's natural fuel source is glucose that comes from processing carbohydrates. Interesting, because I've heard before that but this could just be, like, another thing added. I've heard that, like, um, natural fats, like avocado or um, olive oil or any of those things, I've heard that that's super good for your brain. Like, really good for it. Hmm. So that's just interesting. Which, no, I've heard that that is yeah. for your brain, too, but I wonder if it's, like, good for your brain in other ways that's right, not necessarily, right, like, right, right. quote-unquote energy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, no, I'm sure. I just had heard that. Okay, that will... I'd throw that in there. That'll, that'll <laughs> also be in our um, in our little segment next oh, week. Oh, here, I'll take notes so we don't forget. Yeah, take notes of what we need to take notes on. Okay. Here we go. So... In very low-carb diets, the brain has to adjust to using ketones from digested fats for energy. So, to add to this discomfort, your kidneys release more electrolytes as insulin levels fall. Additionally, your total body water decreases as carbohydrates become depleted on a keto diet. The result, what's known as the keto flu, which could cause constipation, nausea, headache, fatigue, irritability, cramps, and other symptoms. Don't fret, though. The keto flu. Sorry, many it of just these registered that that's okay. The keto flu. I, I think, think if you're funny. thinking about it, your body gets used to like doing this like one process right. of like carbs to glucose to energy, carbs to glucose to energy, carbs to glucose to energy, and then all of a sudden it's like, Rrr! and then it's like, oh shoot, well now now what do we use to create our energy? And it has to completely like redirect right. and find something else, and all of a sudden it's processing through your kidney instead of your pancreas Well, also, thing, you I know? feel like that's, like, anything that you switch. Like, if you're just a really healthy eater and you have McDonald's one night, like, we oh, were talking yeah, about that. that's true. It just I feels like hungover. I feel hungover you. for the next day. Yeah. Or, like, sugar. If I mm-hmm. have, like, a bunch of sugar and then, especially, like, right before bed, the next day I feel, like, not Just good. terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... Many of these symptoms are short-term and should last only a few days to weeks. Make sure to drink plenty of water to help your body cope with these symptoms. So, stay hydrated. Your body's readjusting. It'll get there. It'll start using that fat instead of looking for the carbs eventually. Who knows how long it could take, though. It says days to weeks. (laughs) That's a no. That's a no. That's a no. I'm not going to be doing the keto. (laughs) Literally, but I mean, Roddy has to, like, detox from carbs. You know. Yeah. Anyway. I like okay. carbs. So because keto is it's keto severely limits carbs, you may develop nutrient deficiencies as well. Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you real fast. Maybe you're about to talk about this. This has always been my big question with keto. Is it limiting like your veggies? Well, like your super starchy veggies. Okay. So the thing that's interesting, so like peppers, for instance, they yeah. have more carbs than like broccoli does. Yeah. I think. I think. Take that also take that with a grain of salt. Who knows? But, um, I just know that peppers have, like, potatoes a, a have more, carbs. right, potatoes have more carbs than broccoli. So, like, your starchier, your starchier vegetables, yeah. and your, like, quote-unquote sweeter vegetables, so, like, well, I guess tomatoes technically a fruit, but, you know. And avocado is technically a fruit. Whatever it happens I always to put be. my avocado in the vegetable drawer in my fridge. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it definitely, um, it definitely, like, eliminates your fruit intake, and I think I am about to talk about this, but we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, it definitely limits your fruit intake, and then some of the vegetable intake. So you still get that, like, 5% of, um, that 5% of carbohydrates in your day, and depending on how many calories you're intaking, that depends on how many grams of carbs you can have. See, that's what I'm thinking, because I've had before where I was, like, tracking my 
uh, I don't know. I think I might have, like, cut my carbs, though. I, I'm just messing around with my macros. Right. And I, like, couldn't eat as many vegetables as I wanted. Right. So I'm just wondering if they actually, like, really follow that, like, strictly. Right. Yeah. So, um... Because that can be, like the... you said, that can be, um deficient to what, right, what exactly. you're eating. So on this one on this one site that I went to for a lot of my research on like the pros of the keto diet. Yeah. Um it was on oh shoot. Keto logic, I think. One sec. Let me go back to my other note page here real quick, folks. Um another s- while you're looking at that real yeah. fast, another little like bunny trail is I don't know if you guys have heard, but people have said like that you can, like, consume too much fruit in a day, and that if you have, like, this much fruit, like, that's way too much fruit and all this and stuff, which I totally get. But all all I'm saying is if you're eating fruit instead of candy and cake for once in your life, right? like, good for you. Good for you. Because there'll be times where I'm, like, oh, I'm craving something sweet, but I already had, like, a ton of fruit that day, like, literally, like, cleaned out my fridge of fruit, like, had way too much sugar, probably. Um, And I'm like, you know what, but I'm craving something sweet. You know what, it's okay that I'm eating this cutie instead of that bag of M&Ms or something. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, for me, I'm, like... Who cares? Like, right. If I'm craving this or not, um, whatever. Something interesting though that I that, like I found really interesting and kind of smacked me upside the head was that um, the average person, whether it be natural sugars like you're talking about, like your fruit, your you know honey, whatever it happens to be, or you know there's sugars even in milk type of thing, right? Um, there's, there are sh- natural sugars in some vegetables, even like I was talking about peppers. Right. I know has some natural sugars in it. You guys. Um, Even whether it be natural sugars or, like, processed cane sugar or whatever it happens to be, um, you aren't supposed to have more than 30 grams. And the average person, whether it be natural or unnatural sugar, um, has 140 grams a day. That... Isn't that insane? And, like, an average average size apple has 20 grams of sugar in it. So you're supposed to have, like, literally, like, one... One like either one small like one sorry one large serving of fruit or like two small servings of fruit a day that blows my mind though like yes how much sugar's in it but I've also tracked my macro I track my macros like you guys said and it will tell me how much sugar I'm consuming on average I consume like 40 grams of sugar right which is really good much which is which is the fact that people are consuming 104 grams of sugar a day is mind-blowing but well I mean about it they're getting it in their bread they're getting it they're getting it in their peanut butter if you're not buying the all-natural peanut butter right you're getting it in like your cereal if you're eating like sugary cereal for breakfast right um that bun that you had with your hamburger for lunch that right. canned those canned beans that you had um baked beans and like, your condiments and your ketchup and right. your mustard another that's another thing is i buy all natural ketchup that's um, hot, with sauce. Honey. hot sauce has been sneaky lately <laughs> hot sauce i was looking at the ingredients of one of my hot sauce bottles and it was like something something sugar and i'm like hmm you kitten right you meow. gotta be kidding me right meow so yeah. literally so read your gosh darn labels read also, your gosh darn labels they're ooh, sneaky on also ya. watch rotten the um sugar there's like a sugar episode on netflix it tells you it's sickening how much sugar that like the average consumer like takes in and america consumes like it was like an i wish i could sugar. remember you guys it was a crazy amount of sugar compared to any other yeah. country super duper high um just because we put it in literally everything right yeah so um it is not good for you where was i Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. So, if you want to learn more about how to do the keto diet properly, the where I got a lot of my information about, like, the pro, the quote-unquote pros of doing the keto diet. And they even put some of the, like, cons of doing the keto diet on there. Like, I found a lot of the information on, um, like, different kidney issues it could cause. And, like, if you have type 1 diabetes, don't do it. Here's what you do if you have type 2 diabetes, blah, blah, all of that kind of stuff. It was on ketologic.com. So, um... Nutrient deficiencies, that's what we were talking about. Okay, so when carbohydrate intake is low, fire can, fire, fiber consumption tends to be low too. This doesn't come as a surprise when you consider fruits, whole grains, and starchy vegetables are decreased in your diet, which contain generally contain a lot of fibers. Um, another possible nutrient deficiency is potassium, a mineral important for both electrolyte balance and blood pressure control. So um, on that Ketologic site, they... Um, I think, I think one of the things they recommended was chia seeds, possibly, and, um, was it, was it flax? 
Flaxseed is very good for you, so I would not be surprised. Okay. And they, flaxseed, and then they had a few different, um, they had a few different, like, supplements to help with your, what could possibly become nutrient imbalances, too, So, and stuff. I know, like, flaxseed, you're supposed to have, like, a tablespoon a day, and it's super helpful to a bunch of things, and my dad is pre-diabetic, um, not because he consumes a crazy amount of junk food. Yeah, like, he likes his sweets, and maybe he'll have a dessert, like, every other night or something, but... He's not like a, the normal average American. My mom cooks pretty healthy, but he's pre-diabetic because of his genetics. Yeah. So he has flax every single day. Yeah. And it actually helps. Like, if he wouldn't be taking his flax, I bet you he would be diabetic. That's crazy. That something yeah. so natural. Like, you're, the foods you guys eat and the minerals and the spices, cinnamon is another big one. Yeah. Um, that you eat. Is my mom used to put flaxseed in. Yeah. Honestly, probably one of the reasons I am, like, healthy and I have, like, good hair and good skin and stuff yeah. is, like, th- what I used to think of as a kid as, like, the crap my mom fed me. Yeah. I'm, like, she, because my mom was that mom. She got, like, the seven grain flour and made us bread and, like, I mean, and your mom, too. Your mom was pretty, like, down home, right. like, cooking and stuff like that, too. But every morning she would serve us oatmeal with flax and cinnamon <laughs> and like almonds in it. No sweetener or anything, you guys. That was it. Like, what about, like literally, some maple syrup or honey. No. Natural. Some sometimes sometimes she would, but sometimes she'd be like, no. Depends on what article she read. Not that week. today. Not today. I I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry. She listened to this. She's like, you oh, you kind of pick on me a little bit. And I'm like, like, no, we literally talk about you guys like you're our favorite humans ever. She really is my favorite human ever. And now I have silky shiny hair from all that flaxseed. <laughs> Silky smooth. Silky smooth. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do in the back of my mind, but not it's in the It's a forefront. movie I made you and Kelly watch last week. Oh my gosh, that movie was Have terrible. you guys ever seen The Zohan starring Michael, it. Michael, it's, it's Adam Sandler, I mean? It's inappropriate and it'll scar you for life. Literally, Literally. one of the worst films on the planet. Not because it's so inappropriate, but because the... The acting and the filming is so bad. It's so bad. It's like and it's a little inappropriate. It's very inappropriate. It's like when you watch um uh Napoleon Dynamite and you like it's so funny but so dumb. This is like a whole new. Okay, level. here's the thing though. Napoleon Dynamite wasn't. It was very stupid, but it wasn't horrendous acting. That's true. Like it was stupid, <laughs> but one of the reasons it was so stupid was because the acting wasn't absolutely garbage. So you're like, what? Well, what? I just want to make what? their hair silky smooth. I can't. Literally, I watch like 20 minutes the of it. Turn it off. The Zohan. It's, on it ne- off. it's on Netflix. Maybe watch, watch 10 it. minutes of it. Brady and I watched the whole thing one night. <laughs> Callie and I watched 10 minutes of it. We're like, what is this? You guys and wanted and Brady, keep... we're sitting there just like dying. dying. Okay, we're almost to the end. Okay, stay f- focused. Okay, so... If you want to, go over and you can look and see what these different supplements are. Ketologic.com. Um, some other quick mentions of bad side effects include bad breath, irregular menstrual cycle, constipation. Which, any of those things are really side effects of changing your diet no matter what you're changing it to. Um, oh, and I also have mentioned this. Uh, again, just to mention again, if you have type 1 diabetes, do not try the keto diet. Okay, so to wrap up my little keto diet, 40 minutes in, Cameron's going to have like 10 minutes for We can have an hour and a half paleo, podcast episode, it's diet. fine. Um, so, to wrap this up, you guys, if you are going to try the keto diet, please do your research figure out how to do it properly because I feel like so many people who do it, they're just like, oh yeah, we're just going to cut out carbs. And that's all they do. And then they're going, they're like, you know what? I'm going to eat bacon and like a pound of butter and but, whatever. But here's the deal. It's supposed, you're supposed to ingest more healthy fats to raise your good cholesterol and lower your bad cholesterol. You're not supposed to raise up your bad cholesterol and lose a ton of water weight just to gain it back in two weeks. So if you are going to embark on the keto diet try please 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 go and do your research and figure out how to do it properly because and i and that that can be said with any diet there's a proper way and an improper way to do everything there's a healthy way and a not healthy way to do just about everything even even if you're going vegetarian you can be very unhealthy oh going vegetarian even if you're going vegan you can be very unhealthy going vegan there's vegan sweets out sugar you can have sugar and wine and you're still vegan you know like right exactly or you could have like french fries you're still vegan yeah, that's something that really bothers me. Anyway, not to go on a tangent, but but actually, I'm gonna say this so fast. There's some people who bark down other people's throats about being vegan <laughs> and about protecting the environment. But then every other night, 
they're drinking wine, getting mimosas, um, eating sugar, getting vegan donuts. I'm like, and then they, and then they'll make comments about how they're like healthy. And I'm like, no, Mm -mm. it is much more healthier to be consuming. Much more healthier. It is much more healthier to be consuming meat and dairy and eating that fat cow than it is to be, than it is to be putting poison, aka alcohol into your body. Like, I don't understand what's going through their mind. I really don't get it. How are you that? Ah, never mind. I just need to stop. I just need to stop. That's our tangent on just because you're following quote unquote a diet does not necessarily mean you're healthy. You know what? This is my podcast. I can say what I want. I can say what I want. You don't like No, please keep listening to us. <laughs> please keep listening. <laughs> please keep listening to us. I'm not finishing that. Okay. But 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 to go back on that, like if you are vegan and you do it the right way, like that's awesome. I'm talking that is awesome. I'm talking about the people who literally right. have alcohol every day and sugar and then they try to say that they're healthy. Like that's not good for your right. body. Right. Um that's literally fine. And then I do know some people who are vegans and they come in with, you know, their vegan cupcakes or whatever. There's a vegan at work who comes in with his vegan cupcakes and he knows and like his two things of potato lays and he knows he's not healthy. He knows he's not healthy. He's like, yeah, I'm vegan. I'm like, dude, you're one of the most unhealthy people I've ever met in my life. I haven't met in my life. And he's like, like, oh, I know. I'm terrible. I'm probably going to die at 30. Like, literally. Right. Um, Yeah. So just because you are vegetarian, vegan, keto, does not mean you're healthy. Right. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to dive into some different facts about the paleo diet. So stay tuned. All right. We are back from a quick break from Hy-Vee. Had to get our Insta photo for this upcoming episode, and our photographer was only available for a short period of time. And while at Hy-Vee, you guys, we were just talking about Smart Sweets, weren't we? Yeah, on here. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if that was just you and me or who was on here. No, yeah, we We were just talking about Smart Sweets. Go to the Hy-Vee food or Hy-Vee health food section, and they had them. They had the peach rings. They had like three different types of gummy bears. Um. Anyway, so we got the peach rings because we heard they're amazing, and you guys. These are, like, better. So good. They're better than I real peach than rings. I like real candy, yeah. Yeah. I think the reason I like them better is because they don't have that fake sugar taste. And so, um, we have the bag right here. There's three grams of sugar in them. And, um, they have, like, a Best Buy that's, like, right over the ingredients. But it's really annoying. But pretty much in there is citric acid, fruit juice, natural peach flavor, coconut oil, stevia leaf extract, and some sort of wax, but it says right here that they are plant-based goodness, good source of fiber, free from sugar, alcohol, it's free from artificial colors, naturally flavored, peanut, and um, tree, tree nut free. free. I think the only downfall on these is that their total carbs are 33 grams of carbs, but there's no protein, there's no fat. That's wild. I know, but the calories are 80. Well, the entire bag of oh. it is only 80 calories, and there's a lot of fiber in it, you guys. 28 grams of fiber. Well, did you? I just read that. Oh, we listened to that. <laughs> She was like, sorry. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you told them how many grams. That's insane. Right. And total sugars is three and zero grams of added sugars. So wow. instead of eating fruit for the day, eat this. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Seriously. But so flipping good. And they have like this sour slash sweet like dusting on them. So it, ha- it gives you like a. Which I bet you is where yeah. the rice flour comes into play. Hey. Oh, I bet you're right. Rice flour is one of the things underneath the. Tapioca, uh, tapioca and rice flour is one of the things under the Best Buy. And you know, now that I like haven't had a bite of one in a little bit, I think I'm kind of tasting the stevia. Yeah, but a I, bit. but I like I've said this before, I have stevia every day in my yogurt, yeah. so like it's not something it's not, I like, notice super strong. As much, though. Yeah, but if you're someone who's never had stevia and you're used to sugar, you might it might take a while to get used to. Right. Um, but I honestly didn't. But it's not it like right it's now. not like too overpowering though, no. where you're like, oh my gosh, that's fake. Yeah. You know? We'll definitely post this on the story though, yeah. and let you guys know all about it. Okay, now we're going to talk about the paleo diet. So, the paleolithic diet, also known as the paleo diet, or the caveman diet, or the stone age diet, is a modern fad diet requiring the sole or predominant eating of foods presumed to have been available to humans during the paleolithic era. So, this diet traces back to years to the era of early humans, and after a recent comeback, it's considered a common fad in current diet culture. So, pretty much the basic idea of it is that we should be eating, like, what we were biologically created or programmed to eat. So, like, our ancestors thrived on foods that they hunted and gathered. So, food that's high in fat, like animal proteins, seafood, fish, um, vegetables, for instance. Um, like, also legumes, seeds, grains. Wait, what are legumes? I've read that a few times. 
I read, do you know what legumes are? We're consulting the Google. Because I literally read this word legumes like 20 times. I'm like, what is a legume? Okay, so a legume is um, a plant in the family of faba It's F-A-B-A-C-A-E. Or a fruit or seed. So, um, Fabaceae? Yeah. So Fabaceae. It's like, so it's like a plant or a seed. Okay. And then it says, um are grown agriculturally primarily for the human consumption for livestock or silage. Oh. Um, things that are known, known legumes that you guys know be like alfalfa, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils. Um, I knew lentils was, so, fun fact, I just made myself, I just made, I, soybeans. I literally just ate like a big bowl full of lentils today and it was so good with really? coconut milk and tomatoes. That sounds really weird. It's it's a doll. It's a doll. So you cook the oh, legumes okay, in okay. coconut milk, a bunch of spices, and chopped tomato. And it's okay. really, really good. So, like, it's you're, so like, tasty. getting in touch with your, like, inner Marcy is what you're saying. Right. Okay. So, pretty much, I'm eating, like, Indian slash... Yes. I think it'd fall under Indian or Asian. Somewhere. Something like that, folks. Okay. <laughs> Back to this. We're getting on so many tangents. Okay. So, yeah. Pretty much, you're eating those things, and you're not having processed food, um, and you're not going to have, like, a ton of, like, grains, carbs, um, processed food, grains, oh, or dairy products. Did I say dairy earlier under the wrong thing? No. Oh, maybe. Maybe I did. I but anyways, know. you're not having as much of that or salt or vegetable oils or refined sugar. Um, yeah. Okay. So, pretty much the surface benefits of being paleo is most people experience weight loss and muscle growth while eating a paleo diet and keeping an active lifestyle. Notice active lifestyle there, folks. Improved met 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 metabolic <laughs> processes and gut health. Better sleep, stress management, sufficient vitamin D, and a healthy ratio of omega-3-6 fatty acids all aid in burning off stored body fat. So you're going to be focusing on those vegetables, meat, fish, eggs, fruit, nuts, and seeds, all of which are nutrient-dense foods. It's no surprise that the paleo diet has so many positive effects on one's health and well-being. While every person is unique and there's no one-size-fits-all diet, there are many reported and studied paleo diet benefits that are worth mentioning. I feel like, like, this is my personal opinion, I feel like with the paleo diet, like, you're getting, like, all the nutrients, like, in the l little food pyramid. Right. You know, like, yeah. you're getting everything. You're not cutting one and thing out. what I find so interesting, too, about this is that, um is that the paleo diet actually is a lower carb diet. It doesn't cut out as much carbs as the keto diet does. Right. But it does cut out quite a few of your carbs. You're still having your fruits and stuff. Yeah. So, um, I think your carbs are like 15% I maybe saw on um, that sticks in my mind as opposed to that 5%. So you're, you are cutting down on your carb intake, but not so much that you're losing that muscle mass. In fact, it said right there that it, um, one of the, major known um one of the major known benefits is you know improved muscle mass or whatever right i think you're just like focusing when it comes to getting your carbs it's probably more focused on like vegetables and like right. things that are grown from the earth and not so much like processed bread and right. stuff that's like what it was saying okay so um one second where was i at oh no Oh, yeah. Okay, I found it. So, um, so the paleo diet is rich in nutrients, as we said. One of the misconceptions about the paleo diet is that because you eliminate things like grains, legumes, and most dairy, you're going to miss out on nutrients. On the contrary, by consuming more nutrient-dense animal protein, seafood, and eggs, and replacing refined pasta, bread, and rice with more vegetables, like I said, healthy fats, nuts, seeds, berries, and fruit, you're actually going to consume more minerals and vitamins. Plus, by avoiding gut-irritating grains and legumes, most people experience improved gut health and increased nutrient absorption. Um, um, which is, okay, super interesting. Sorry, I keep on getting off on um, tangents, but just made, reminded me that um, some diets over time um, can result in you having a leaky gut. So what a leaky gut means, have you heard of leaky gut? Actually, one of my, um, one of my coworkers has a leaky gut and she has, and she's like taking a bunch of probiotics and like a bunch of bone broth and stuff for it now. My, one of my family members had leaky gut. Really? And it was like almost, it was like very, very dangerous. Like they almost died. That's crazy. Yeah. So it like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty much that means that when you like digest your food, your body, like all the nutrients like pretty much like leak out, right? Something, I, I don't remember exactly kind of what's happening, effect. but I know that there's certain foods that cause it to like leak out. So they need to stay away from certain foods if you have leaky right. gut syndrome. Right. So, um, um, yeah. Okay. 
back to where we were at before, we were talking about leaky gut syndrome. Yep, we sure were. Which, where was this at? That was, that was on our first point still. I mean, we only have like four points, but we'll get there. Okay, so we were under, the paleo diet is rich in nutrients. Um, most people experience improved gut health and increased nutrient absorption. Okay. So we were on point two? Yep. Point two is weight loss. So the paleo diet is naturally lowering carbohydrates and sugar than most traditional Western diets. Um, this helps to regulate metabolism, lower blood sugar, improve your gut health, and reduce syst- syst- systemic inflammation, aided by better sleep and stress management. Both key paleo lifestyle goals. These changes help to burn off stored body fat naturally and sustainably. And then number three is it improves digestion digestion and reduces bloating. Paleo diet avoids many foods that contain compounds known to negatively affect the digestive tract. For many people, the culprit of their digestive issues include excess sugar, dairy, legumes, and gluten. These foods are excluded from the paleo diet, resulting in improved symptoms. Plenty of plant fiber from vegetables and fruit ensures the gut is kept in tip-top shape, and most people report improvement to their bowel movements. For anyone who just heard me burp, uh, that was Jenna. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Did you just forget we were recording? Or well, what? no, it just came out of nowhere. You know how that my mom is seriously like, what kind of caveman child did I raise? Um, but no, it just you know they just sometimes like sneak up out of nowhere and there's no stopping them. I tried to keep it quiet, but it. I don't think I succeeded. I don't know. I don't. If think you so heard either. it, I'm sorry. Okay, but back to the improved digestion. This goes back with what I was telling you guys all about um, food combining and um, how. Like, if you're going to eat those, like, lo- those things that are heavy in carbs and starchy with, you, like, your proteins. Excuse Jenna. She's also getting her sorry. smart sweets out of her bag and being loud. I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, if you combine starchy foods with, like, proteins and stuff, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if you have, like, meat and potatoes, it does, you get, feel like this, you have this sinking, like, this feeling in your stomach. Like, it's just sitting there because it's mm-hmm. just not able to digest correctly. Okay. And then number four is hunger control. Familiar with the term hangry? <laughs> yes. Turns out it's more scientific than the average person might think. It's the combination of hungry plus angry, which is a common symptom for many people suffering from acute or chronic um, hypoglycemia. This is me! It is you. This is why I get hangry, which is con- common symptoms for many people suffering from... Oh, I just read that. Sorry. Okay. This also happens when the blood sugar drops and the person gets a rapid onset of hunger accompanied by irritability, fatigue, disorientation, and a foggy mind. I would just like to throw this out there, you guys. My stomach rarely ever growls. Ever. Like, most people, when they're hungry, they're like, oh, yeah, my stomach is growling. No. For me, I will get, like, shaky, and I'll, like, almost feel, like, lightheaded, or I'll notice I'm really irritable for no reason. Like, it just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, it's not that time of month. Like, nothing. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's that time that it's, like, snack time. Snack time. It needs to happen. See, yeah. and when I was young, I never really thought I was that kind of person where, like, my hunger affected me that much, because... I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I just feel felt like I wasn't that kind of person that like needed to eat or like I could deal with being hungry or whatever. But then, um, like just recently, I would say like this year, I'm really like realizing that my hanger is kind of out of control. Like when it's almost time for me to go to go on break at work, I will be a monster. I will be a yeah. cranky monster and then I will come back from work after eating and I'll be like, hello, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. How are you? I love you. Like, it is black and white. I am not kidding you, you guys. Hanger is a real thing. It, it is a real thing. Okay, so paleo meals consist of more protein and fat, which are both very satis- satiating? What's that word? Sa- sa- satiating? Satiating? And provide- satiating. Oh, it's fine. And provide <laughs> long-lasting energy. Being lower in carbohydrates, the paleo diet teaches the body to use those macronutrients more efficiently instead of relying on glucose from carbohydrates for fuel. The carbohydrates you do consume come from fiber-rich vegetables and fruit, meaning that the glucose is utilized more slowly. As a result, the blood sugar levels stay stable and you rarely experience energy drops. Hunger develops gradually without the crazy mood swings. And I have heard that before, too. That, like, it, it is better for you to eat that way if you are hypoglycemic or if you struggle right. with your blood sugar dropping. I right. definitely But that. what I like about it is, like, we're going to cut out a lot of the carbs. We're not going to cut out all of them because we still want your body to use glucose and to mm-hmm. still have a glucose production and use it for energy. But we're just going to develop something that makes it your body utilize it slower. Okay, so a few other claimed benefits that we encourage you guys to research is, A, increased and more stable energy levels. 
Um, okay, I'm not going to go through the whole alphabet. I just started with A. No, that was one. Two, improved sleep. Three, clear skin and healthier looking hair. Four, mental clarity. Uh, five, improved mood and attitude. Six, improvements in those suffering depression or anxieties. Seven, less or no bloating decreased and decreased gas. Eight, sustained weight loss. Nine, muscle growth and increased fitness. Ten, lowered risk of heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. Eleven, higher immune function and a greater <laughs> and a general feeling of well-being. Twelve, improved glucose tolerance, decreased insulin secretion, and increased insulin sensitivity. Twelve, improved lipid. Am I saying that right? Lipid profiles. Profile. Thirteen, healthier gut flora, which is the human gastroid gastrointestinal microbiota i can't just speak dude these are hard words okay human gastrointestinal microbiota also known as gut flora or gut microbiota are microorganisms that live in the digestive tract of humans many non-human animals including insects are hosts to numerous microorganisms that reside in the gastro gastrointestinal tract as well this is why it is important to have a healthy gut you guys and it is important to either take those probiotics or be getting those healthy um um bacteria getting that healthy bacteria into your gut somehow because in the day that we live in um all of our food is too so clean it is like too clean that we are not getting that bacteria mm-hmm. that we used to get in our gut we are not being able to build that up and that your is why it is rinsed and bleach yeah and that is why <laughs> we are not that is why we get sick in like that is why, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's, but, I mean, it. they, like, you are right because, I mean, keeping away from germs is good to an extent. But um, I there was a study done that said that a lot of germaphobes are more likely to become, like, to become sick more often. Right. Because you're not, expo- like, your your body doesn't build up as much antibodies is that the right word to say or your immune system isn't as strong because you're not exposed to enough germs it might seem kind of like counterintuitive i guess but um but yeah it's definitely it's definitely a real thing that if you're not exposed to enough quote-unquote bad things or germs or bacteria that your body has a hard time um with its natural defense mechanisms and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um this diet can also help with um, reduced allergies, <laughs> I can't talk anymore. Reduced allergies, better absorption of nutrients from food, and it's also an anti-inflammatory. And most people experience a reduction of pain associated with inf- inflammation. And lastly, um, it improve improvements in those with respiratory problems such as asthma. So what I like about this diet more than the keto diet is that it doesn't actually like cut out all the carbs. We um, said this, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like it is. It is a better way to go. I personally think, yeah. Okay. Um, so... Well, yep. Now on to the negatives. On to the negatives. <laughs> okay. Get all that, get all that smart sweet out of your, out of your mouth. Oh my gosh. Okay. Many people who start following a paleo diet report that they experience initial detox and readjustment symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, and digestive changes. These usually pass within five to seven days. Some even experience flu-like symptoms known as the carb flu, because we just got done talking about the keto flu, when their body consumes fewer carbohydrates. Some might experience digestive issues due to the increased fiber consumption, like eating more vegetables, or from introducing fermented foods. Increased fat consumption might initially affect stool texture and regularity. Most digestion-related symptoms tend to level out after a couple of weeks. Um, And this was super interesting because in the keto diet, one of the cons was digestive issues cause of not enough fiber in the diet. So, yeah. That's very interesting. It's the opposite way around. It's like you're getting you're getting a little too much. You're getting a little too much passing, passing and movement of the bowels because of all the fiber. Where in the keto diet, is, most people most people get um, constipated with it, mm-hmm. like for like the first week or two. Yeah. Because you're not getting enough fiber. Mm-hmm. And it can also lead to low carb intake, which can lead to ketosis, which we've already talked about. Restrictions of dairy products and dairy restriction can lead to deficiencies in calcium and vitamin D, which are crucial to the bone health. 
Saturated fats are suggested in very generous amounts. Consuming the paleo diet recommended amount of saturated fats can increase the risk of kidney and heart disease, as well as certain cancers. High intake of red meat and high fatty meats. Past and current research also suggests that a heightened level of high fat meat and saturated fat can increase LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, and can risk about can risk of bowel cancer. Per the American Heart Association, an adult should consume a total of 13 grams of saturated fat per day. On a paleo diet, saturated fat intake can approach up upwards of 50 grams per day. Holy. That is a lot. That is a lot. Um, and then segmentation of good and bad foods. A one-size-fits-all best diet approach does not work and can be a problematic to most individuals, especially those prone to black and white, all-or-nothing thinking. Categorizing foods into good and bad can lead to feelings of guilt, shame, and low self-worth when the rules of diet are broken. I've definitely had food guilt before. Like, if you eat something sweet or, like, super sugary and you're like, that was bad, and then you just feel, like, so bad about yourself. Right, yeah. No, food guilt definitely, um, definitely is a thing. And I think that, um, I, I found it so interesting because that's, I actually, that last little bit, I, um... Well, I mean, I copy and pasted a lot of my notes. Some of it was my own words. But um, that last little bit that I put in there I found so interesting because um, a lot of a lot of the time when you're thinking of, like, the negative effects and, like, the positive effects and stuff, you're just thinking in terms of, like, body health. Mm-hmm. But um, in her last point she made, it was that I feel like that's more along the side, um, along the lines of being aware of, like, your mental health when you go through dieting. Because I think that that is a huge, huge, huge thing. You get, you get, I know it is a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, you get so into your head and it's so easy to become so, um obsessive and like and like she said it's it's very common to experience food guilt and I think a big thing that I would if anyone is trying to eat healthier you're going on a new diet or you're trying to um you know start on a road of um a healthier lifestyle or whatever it may be I would encourage you to keep in your mind like there is grace for the bad days Mm -hmm. like give yourself grace give yourself give yourself, you know, time and, um, and patience. It's not, it's not an overnight thing. I think it's, what is it? It's, it's, it takes like a month to form a habit. It takes like three months to form a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I think just remembering that, like you're going to fall off some days and that's okay. Just get right back on. I know we've talked about that a little bit before, but I think it was important to touch on that again. again. We're preaching it again, you guys. We are preaching it again. It's not, and it's not like, it's not like, okay, well, once I get kind of used to it, it's going to be easy. No, I, I've been pretty adamant about living, quote unquote, a healthy lifestyle for the past, like, I don't know, since like my junior year of high school when I got diagnosed with PCOS and, um, it's still a struggle. Mm-hmm. It's still a struggle. So it always, I think it always will be. To it some always degree. will be. Yeah. To some degree. Yeah. Okay. So other dietary lifestyle fads. That get a quick honorable mention and just quick overview so you know what they are. Um, we didn't have obviously enough time because we wanted to give you guys a good amount of information on um, on those two because I feel like they're very prevalent um, currently. Um, okay, so vegan. Veganism is the practice of abstaining from the use of animal products, particularly in diet and, associ- and an associated philosophy that rejects the commodity status of animals. Um, a follower of the diet or the philosophy is known as a vegan. And also, if you guys haven't, you should go and listen to our episode where we tried it and we were vegan yeah. for a week. Because we talk a lot about veganism yeah. and a lot about how we feel and about the nutrients that you get from it and also the things that you're lacking in. So we do go like into that one a lot more in that yeah. episode. Yeah. So backtrack if you haven't and listen to that episode. Or just listen to it again for a little refresh. Right, yeah, Yeah. listen to it again. Or go vegan for a week like us. (laughs) Wouldn't recommend. (laughs) Wouldn't recommend. (laughs) Okay, and then there's plant-based. And a plant-based diet is a diet consisting mostly of entire or entirely of foods derived from plants, including vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, legumes, and fruits. Or with few or no animal products. A plant-based diet is not necessarily vegetarian. Um, okay, so the difference... I put this in here because I feel like a, a lot of people don't know, at least I didn't know, um, until, well, recently, until, like, a couple years ago, but there is, 
a very big difference between if you're vegan or if you're plant-based. So pretty much vegan is like the whole lifestyle, like you love animals so, so, so much, nothing, nothing wrong with that, that you don't want to kill any of them or you don't want to, even, even some vegans, um, I think technically vegans don't eat like honey mm -hmm. because it comes from bees or whatever. So it's pretty much just, like, respect for all, like, living life, whatever. But I would like to throw in there, too, some people are only vegan with what they eat, and they'll still, like, use leather. Or right. they'll right. still, like, do that kind of stuff. Right, but then I yeah. would then I would suggest that those people are, well, actually, technically those people are then plant-based. They're not, their, their diet is plant-based and it's not vegan. Okay, so it says, so here, the Google, the Google, the Wikipedia said, the difference between plant-based and vegan. A plant-based diet is a diet based on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. A vegan diet is strictly against animal products in every form, not only in diet. Not only do vegans not eat meat, dairy, eggs, or honey, they also don't wear animal products like leather or use products tested on animals. Yeah, and you see, like, a lot of um, shampoo, conditioner, um, those types of products anymore that will say, like, vegan on them. Right, and that doesn't mean that your other shampoos, like, there's milk in it. It just means that, right, it's another way to say, you know, um, not tested on animals. So, um, the next one is pescatarian. So, pescatarianism, also known as gotitarianism, we are really good at pronouncing big words, you guys. I don't know if you've noticed. Um, today especially. Today especially. It's, it's one of our main talents, really, I think. Okay, so it is the practice of adhering to a diet that incorporates seafood as the only source of meat in an otherwise vegetarian diet. Most pesc pesc pescatarians are ovo-lacto-vegetarians who eat seafood along with dairy products and eggs. And then there is the vegetarian. And vegetarianism, <laughs> I just think that's a funny word. Okay, is the practice of abstaining from the consumption of meat and may also include absten abstaining from byproducts of animal slaughter. Vegetarian, being a vegetarian may be adopted for various reasons. Many people objecting to eating meat out of the respect for um, animal life. Okay, and then omnivore. And um, I found it funny that this was listed amongst um, diet fads because it's pretty much just like you don't really have a quote unquote diet. It's just you eat everything. You eat everything. At least that's what I understand. Okay. An omnivore is a being that has the ability to eat and survive on both plant and animal matter. Obtaining energy and nutrients from plant and animal matter, omnivores digest carbohydrates, protein, fat, and fiber and metabolize the nutrients and energy of the sources absorbed. And then lastly, we're going to talk about being gluten-free. And a gluten-free diet is a diet that strictly excludes gluten, which is a mixture of proteins found in wheat as well as barley, rye, and oats. The inclusion of oats in a gluten-free diet remains controversial and may depend on the oat um, type and the frequent cross-contamination cross -contamination with other gluten-containing cereals. I know some people can't have any, like things that have been cross-contaminated right. at all. Not we, even made um, in the same kitchen. Right. When when we I was on um oh my gosh. What was it? It was hospitality. So I was I was on the hospitality team when I was doing my um Bible school in France. And our the leader one of the leaders of our school, he had such a sensitive like gluten intolerance that when we went to like make up his separate like birthday cake or whatever it happened to be or whatever treat we were having that night when we went to make up our separate, um, like, his separate treat, we had to, like, rinse all of the, all of the, um, like, um, baking utensils, even if they were, like, clean and put away. Oh, wow. We still had to rinse it just in case, like, any, like, gluten dust landed on it or wow, something. That's like, crazy. Like, he literally would have the slightest crumb and his whole body would, like, oh. shut down and he would be in the hospital for a week. Isn't that just nuts? Yeah, that's crazy. I know someone like that, too. That's so hard. I couldn't, I honestly couldn't imagine. Yeah. And, like, I think I have a hard, like, kind of sort of trying to stay away from gluten on a good day. Like, what? Yeah. yeah that's, that's crazy. Nuts. So, we hope that you guys learned a few new things about fad dieting and all the different diets that are out there. Um, what works best for you. Um, what's actually healthy. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Would encourage, again, encourage you guys to go. Do some research. If you're, if you're curious, if you're just like, okay, this is an interesting episode and move on, that's fine. But yeah, 
if you are interested in trying one of these or maybe getting into counting macros, Cameron mentioned her app in last week's um in last week's episode. Yep, What's it my called? Fitness Pal. My Fitness Pal. I see her tracking her macros in there all the time. If you want to try doing that, um, and then or also even like your sugars or or yeah, your sugars or like whatever that. it happens to be. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in the vegan lifestyle, you can always download um your <laughs> your your one that they put like the products in, you know, and that'll tell you if it's tested on animals or not. What was that one called? Oh, the app I told you guys about. It's called Healthy Living. Healthy Living. There yes. you go. So there's a few starting points for you guys. Some information. Hope you learned something. Go try Smart Sweets. Go try Smart they Sweets. They have my high V. They have my GNC. Um. GMC, I said GNC, GNC. <laughs> um, where else do they have them? I think Probably I've heard the Amazon. I've heard they have them at Target. You guys need to try these, the Peachio style ones. Yeah, so good. Did you eat all yours? No, I have one left. I was oh. saving it for a little treat for after. I ate all mine. I during keep the crinkling. Podcast. This is so funny. I keep crinkling the like literally. I I slightly move and like my the entire chair sounds like it's gonna fall apart or like I crinkle my package. And Cameron literally got up earlier, left her chair, went and grabbed something, came and sat back down, has poured herself a couple glasses of wine, and literally has not made a single sound. And literally, I like think about breathing, and I it sounds like a bomb went off yep that's about right that's about right in like every episode she's except like, for maybe eating my pgo thing smart sweets i felt like i was really loud chewing and chopping on those so yeah it does Sorry, kind guys. of echo in your brain a little bit anyway hope you learned something new try smart sweets and i'll see you back not see you you'll hear us here back next week and if you want to see like all the amazing stuff we've been posting on instagram we post more about the last episode was on apps i've been posting some things on um what apps we use all that kind of stuff. Um, we're doing some surveys. We're going to be having another giveaway coming up eventually. Um, we're also going to be having some more guest speakers on, and we're going to be asking you guys questions on what you want to hear specifically from them. So please go give us a follow at Coffee and a Combo Podcast. Also, um, go ahead and give us a little shout out or a little review on Apple Podcasts. Give us something something out of five stars. You guys get to choose. Um, we love the written reviews. We've also been posting those to our stories. So, um, please go follow us. Okay, bye. Bye.